one. Well, thank you for accepting uh, this invitation, Lindemann. <laughs> I don't know if I shall call you your lindiness, something like this. Uh, um, I think you don't do very many podcasts. I, I don't see that. Uh, so, well, I'm, I'm not sure even if this is a podcast or what it is, but, uh, but thanks for accepting it. Um, so, um, yeah, let's say, um, let me, let me start, let me get this started. Um, maybe with a bit of flattery, okay? Uh, and I know that you have written in your newsletter against uh, flattery, uh, that it is uh, appealing to the lower nature of the flattered person. But uh, I th really think that you are doing something quite uh, unusual and original on Twitter. I've been following you for years and you have also been a bit of an inspiration for me to um, tweet in more a personal manner. So um, thank you. And uh, thank you for the kind words, Nacho. Appreciate yeah. that. I, I know well, uh, we've been following each other for a while. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's very nice, very nice to hear. Thank you so much. And uh, um, I'm subscribed to your newsletter, as I was telling you. And before this uh, podcast or whatever, uh, I've uh, been taking notes and I, I was taking so many notes that uh, uh, I told you that uh, this will not exceed two hours and that uh, that will be challenging, but uh, let's uh, let's uh, try it, okay? So also you are a bit controversial figure in, in Taleb Twitter, which uh, like I'm very deep into that. And uh, some people don't like you there, you, you know very well. I don't know why. But... Well, I tell you my theory about that, if you want to hear it. And you have also written about that. It's Go ahead. Envy. Ah. Okay. So there is like a reference group that would be right. whatever, um, real world risk uh, alumni or uh, uh, Taleb readers or whatever. And you think standing out with your own voice and uh, some instructors or some people like that, that maybe think that they are special or something and they are not so much, or they sound a bit like a GP3 Taleb porn generator, I say. Um, they, they get a <laughs> bit <laughs> envious about that. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, tell, tell, tell us a bit more because um, I don't know much about Paul Scala's, uh, I know that you, I think you, you are from New York originally. Where, where do you come from? No, uh, Chicago, uh, but I moved to New York, uh, DC, then New York for a little bit. Um, but I don't think there's much uh, personally that's interesting. That's, um, that, 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 in, that, uh, I suppose the ideas are more interesting and then sometimes the life experience feeds into the ideas uh, that I post in the newsletter. Um, but um, yeah, and I, I think I think what's when you say, you know, uh, I think there was a COVID, there was a COVID, you know, we know we're in the pandemic. I moved a little bit to Europe. Um, you know, back in, in the summer, you know, we, I was stuck in this very small apartment in New York. Uh, there was a curfew outside. Many people were in the same situation. And, um, you know, uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. And I wanted to get out. And I knew that what happens in the winter, people get sick in the winter. And this thing isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, you know, when I went to, uh, the Taleb's class, the Real World Risk Institute, the first thing he said was, I'm worried about a pandemic. This was 2018. So, um, so now I'm living in a, a small a small town in France uh, by the sea. Well, I, I think I know the, which one. I, you, you have even said so, so I think it's no secret. Right? It's Deauville. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and 
uh, that's that's where I am now. You know, working from home. Um, I I've, I've been talking about you know shift. You know, working from home for years, right? I call it remote work nationally. Sort of put a nice put a nice name on it because when I was in New York, you know, man, I, I was paying so much for an apartment and it was it was this little thing, and I was walking around going how how you know how how is this sustainable? What is this doing to people? What the social effects is causing this? And it, look, j- companies cluster, and then jobs cluster with the companies, and then the service industry follows, and then we're all in this one space. And I know cities are lindy, but I just feel like something like New York was uh, just just got out of control. And um, and then you add on the commute, and then I thought. You know, I'm, we have the technology for the first time to take your work and go wherever you want, and you don't really lose anything. And that's what happened. It just needed, you know, a, a, a virus to come from, you know, from from somewhere. And here we are in a new world. Um, so here I am as well. Do you? Let's see, just um, really nothing says much, but. Um, you prefer to be a bit private about your life uh, so that the ideas mm, become more relevant or is it, is it like downside? I mean, that you have to protect a bit uh, your downside uh, by uh, not uh, saying I mean, I, some things uh, both? I, uh, even I'm a lawyer by trade. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is, there is, there is a, you know, there is a downside with being online with putting too much information, which is, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there. It's obvious. It's uh, obvious. They're, they're looking to, 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 to destroy other people or for, for, for a laugh or for whatever. Oh, so, for virtue signaling. Um, um... For, yeah. But you see the, so there's like, not only is there the cancel culture, right. Which is, um, I think one of my tweets got picked up yesterday by some account, like a joke I made about height being a social construction that I've met taller men who are shorter than me because of attitude, right? It was, it was a good joke. And that gets picked up by this account. It got retweeted and now it has like 40, 50,000 likes. And there's this, there's this mob, right? We all know there's this mob that something can happen if you say the wrong thing that can attack you. But then there's also individuals so it's uh, that also have an agenda. So I, I just don't think there's much upside with putting your personal life beyond a yeah, certain. Yeah, well, I, I think I Helen calls right. it. I'm a private intellectual, not a public intellectual, right? So, mm. But you need. But I also think putting your skin in the game of your name and your face uh, is is uh, is I think important if you have real ideas to uh, advance. So. So if you're completely an anon online, um, and I understand that, uh, you sort of aren't taken as seriously as someone who, hey, I have something important to say. These are my ideas, and I'll put my name and face behind it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know what engaging with a personal life uh, does. Okay, fair enough. Just just one about. Uh... Family background, background. Scalas is is Greek, I guess. Is it? Yeah, I'm uh, Greek American. My parents are from Greece. Um, you yeah. have a Greek passport? No, no, I never, I never, um, I never uh, went to get it. I never. It's like a process. I never bothered by it. I don't know. I mean, which which uh, region in Greece? Uh, uh, it's it's. The western, it's the Ionian Islands. Uh, my father's from a small island called Kalamos. And um, it's by another town called Mitika. Most people don't really, it's just a very small, but it's on that side of, of the, uh, the country. Do you speak the language or? Uh, I, I speak it okay, just okay. It, it's kind of, um, I used to speak it better, but languages fade. Um, as I've noticed, if you don't practice it all the time, um, so it's faded after a while because I haven't, I don't speak it on a daily basis. And, so you have more like an understanding uh, kind of capacity than producing uh, or 
um, you know, the passive uh, I mean, kind of I understanding. Can, yeah, I mean, I can understand it fine, but probably uh, probably couldn't have a long a long conversation in it if I was forced to. to okay. In it. Well, let's go to your core concepts. Huh? And uh, well, <laughs> this is Lindy. Okay, I uh, call you Lindy Man. Uh, it's uh, your handle, well, not your handle, but your your uh, usual motto in Twitter. There's a thing also that I noticed some guys in this Taleb Twitter that criticize you uh, as uh, you have created like a, an internet persona. And personally, I see it as, as something interesting, creative, you know? This is, uh, well, actually, I think almost anyone who is very active uh, on social media is creating a persona so uh, in, a, in, in a way or another. And the more active, the more true that would be. You know? And that used to be uh, like uh, uh, reserved to people like writers or artists, you know, someone like Salvador Dali would have like an exuberant persona and it was kind of a marketing ploy in a way. Uh, and uh, and well, um, someone told me that apparently had met you in one of these real world risk institutes uh, that you attended. Oh, well, this, the guy actually, when you met him, is like normal. <laughs> you know, it's not always saying uh, outlandish uh, stuff and things like that. You know, like uh, 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 and it's like okay, that that's uh, how how is that uh, relevant? You know, and it's also it is for me the, the interesting question is. Um, I mean, if one is normal or you just uh, go to office and behave normally and then crack uh, usual jokes, but not uh, uh, misogynistic uh, jokes or things like that, is, um, does that mean that, uh, that the persona that you are created is fake or does it mean that the persona that you are in your, when we come to that, uh, for a child life is is the fake one, you know, that the one that you need, the narrative that you need to build in order to survive. But anyway, uh, Lindy, um, Lindy is, uh, uh, and you don't claim. Yeah, no, we can, we can, we can, wait, we let's we'll talk about this for a second. Um, personas, I mean, what is, for me, Twitter is a bar, it's a cafe. Twitter is a place, and what happens at a bar, at a cafe, what happens in a conversation, you mix jokes, you mix serious topics, you mix all types of things within uh, even the same 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 uh, sentence, and um, there's like a culture of sort of posting, right? Which is basically with a lot of anons and stuff, uh, but it doesn't have to be. But but it's a, it's just it's just um, we're gonna talk about some real stuff. We're gonna talk about um, some creative creative stuff. We're gonna talk about some funny stuff. We're gonna be outlandish. But we're all just gonna mix them up together, and, and you're smart enough to know what to take seriously and then what not to. And um, well, but that's the conversation things like, is. you know, re remote and, and you work nationalism. Persona. You know, it's, I I didn't know. Like, I mean, I thought it was a joke. You know, I'm 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 uh, <laughs> I'm by trade. I'm a consultant, and I was working in a company whose main business was outsourcing. And it's like I didn't even believe in it. Like, uh, with like uh, this company it was an Indian company called Infosys, and you know, I think mm -hmm. the stock after the pandemic has almost doubled or something like that. And uh, I didn't think it was possible. But but now I find myself actually living uh, uh, that and it was possible and i think that you you were not totally I ironic like two years ago when you were writing about these topics you you actually meant it i guess that it was more obvious for you than it was for me that we could be doing that kind of work uh, from our houses or from a greek island or something like that uh, and uh, I, was it was it ironic or was it uh, no, serious? no, that was, but, but that's what I mean. It was, it was a serious idea, but wrapped into we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have some jokes around the serious idea. It's it's um it's it's both. It's all of it. It's uh it's serious. A lot of what I talk about is serious, um, but then we play with it a little bit, and we put a cartoon to it. We put a name to it. We uh. 
we talk about, you know, voluntary communities and Lindy villages, which sound um, funny, right? Years ago, a Lindy village, right? And then all of a sudden you think about, well, what, what does it mean to scale up remote work and would voluntary communities form over the decades if this is the norm? And would villages, uh, you know, if, you, if you're watching Taleb's Twitter, you, you see him retweeting Return to the Mediterranean. You see him basically trying to sell Lebanon, trying to sell the Mediterranean as a place. Well, he, he come, does it very well. Right? And I said, like, I, I, I'm, I'm very much into Taleb. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I don't, I don't even right, pretend to hide. Too. Yeah, we, we both are, and that's probably how we got connected in Twitter. And it, it makes me, I mean, he he makes so good publicity, you know, that he persuaded me. I'm very easily persuaded by it, but like, uh, really like to uh, be pro more proud of my heritage. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a soft form of... Uh, uh, med supremacism that it is slightly ironic you know but but he would he would say things like meds are these ways and nordics are these ways and chinese are that way you know and it's, uh, and it's not uh, to be taken it's with to be taken with a grain of salt but yeah uh, there is also uh, i mean uh, probably i would say one of his underrated accomplishments is taking the med brand which is not was on the floor Right, and him picking it up. Sort of well, I, mean, see, I don't know for Greeks, but uh, a thing. for for Spaniards, and this thing, that Italians are slightly different than that. You know, Spaniards don't have like a poor idea uh, of themselves. I think it's probably even more right. true in the southern side of the Mediterranean that you know that you look up for references, or you look to America. You know, like uh, right. the. 100 1000 year american empire for right. uh, for references and, and you tend to uh, look at uh, what uh, like uh, people do or think over here uh, as non sophisticated and and it's often the other way around and i think the italians as far as i know are a bit peculiar in that they don't have that inferiority complex well, it's also connecting the different countries together, right? And then and also talking about the traits, sort of history and continuity to modern day. Um, I, you know, I think he does, he does he, you know, I think he's a very talented writer. And I think what d differentiates himself from a lot of the people that post uh, are that they don't have that talent uh, that he has of actually, you know, being a writer, which, you know, making things, you know, uh, interesting. And I think that's, you know, if you read a book, I read a book called Scale by, um, I forgot uh, his Jeffrey name, West. Jeffrey West. And yeah. it was terrible. It was terrible. I hated it. And and I'm like, how do you mess up? How do you make this gr really interesting concept? It's not, it's not interesting. And I just boring to read. And then you read Taleb and he's doing the same concept, but he's throwing in there, you know, references to antiquity, a modern day, to technology, and he's just wrapping it up. And then he's throwing Fat Tony and different, and he's, oh, this is what talent is. This is what, you know, you're taking the same idea, uh, but it's better to, to, to read, it's more enjoyable. And I think, um, I think he does that quite well. Well, actually that's uh, also the same that I was about to say about you. Some say, some critics say about Taleb that actually, you know, he writes about fractals, he writes about power laws, and then these are not things that he has invented, but he's uh, things that he has made uh, available for the broader public, and he has made it enjoyable, as you say, like, which is a very Im unlikely achievement, so to say, because I, I, would, I would have seen, like, uh, at least superficially, some of these things in college and something like that, never look into them, uh, deeply enough because no one was making them enjoyable, right? Um, anyway, Lindy. Uh, so right. Lindy is a Taleb concept, but that you have almost transformed into a meme. Okay? And then this is like, as you were starting this conversation, I think that uh, you were referring to New York and you being stuck there and it's, 
modernity is not lindy. No? The things like uh, processed foods, seed oils. I'm, I'm quoting things that you have said, but that Taleb has said uh, himself, which you would not deny. Um, breakfast with choco pops, all, the, all those kind of things are, mm -hmm. are not lindy, right? So maybe you can elaborate a bit more since you are lindy man. Yeah, uh, there's that. And I think that's, it's like, uh, it's great to use as a risk, um, as, as, as a risk point of view. So, you know, eating, you know, high sugar breakfast uh, was never a thing. And now it is. And what is, you know, we don't know the effects of that on us. Um, you can even start at that basic level. And there's other levels too, which is, you know, I focus, tend to focus more on human nature. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a big, there's a yep. big trend of psychology exactly. and, you know, thinking fast. So Meyer slow. Briggs uh, is something you have brought about, like not being a uh, Lindy. Yeah. And, and it's just, we're living in um, basically, you know, at least in America and modernity cut, you know, psychology sort of being, um, uh, it's like a science and this is how personalities are and this is how people act and how much of this is real and then you know Taleb comes along and writes um, that you know a better kind of viewpoint is that psychology must be Lindy compatible so we have um, human writings on human nature from um, ancient times, thousands of years ago, and this has survived uh, to the present day. And anything in psychology has to be, current psychology has to uh, comply with what's already survived through uh, the filter of time. Um, so I recently wrote something on envy using basically Plutarch um, and, and a few other sources on how to view, how they view envy and, and how the human hasn't changed uh, much. I would say in a few thousand years, so we can uh, focus uh, on, you know, it, at least I do, which is human, you know, encountering human nature through this lens. But yeah, there's there's other ways to use Lindy too, as far as um, what to eat. I mean, those are easy. What to eat, what to drink. Don't eat something. Don't drink something that are you know less than 100 years old or less than 500 years old. You don't know what's going to do to you. Uh, it's an excellent so, filter, right? Is it, I use it as a filter. Yes, like, yeah, I mean, I, it's, a great, it's, a, it's a great, uh, I think it's easy. It's really easy to for someone to just normies, right? If somebody you just tell, you can explain this to them um, and they can pick it up quite easy. I think it's probably Tello's most intuitive or at least easy to explain idea. Oh. Well, this is again, it's, it, Taleb is a, a great uh, vulgarizator of the idea. I don't know how you say this in, in English, but he has made it like a common uh, folkish, uh, uh, like to those who read it. But it, it would be also Lindy. Lindy is Lindy in the sense that, you know, you, you will have a, a catch of like a, phrasal verbs or things like that in, in many languages, like uh, time is the best filter or uh, like uh, um, there is uh, right. uh, Alfonso X, El Sabio, Alfonso X of Castile, who said something like uh, uh, read all books, uh, burn all logs and uh, right. drink all wines, you know, there's a, a, and so Lindy itself is Lindy in a way. Yeah, it is. And uh... You know, when I started posting about it in 2018, it's not like this was everywhere. <laughs> okay, you know, you see this a lot right now uh, online, and I think that who wrote about it? Something Forbes, I think, wrote about it recently. I'm not saying that's because of me, but um, no, who? Sorry, like who is that? Uh, is that? Forbes wrote an article. Oh, about Forbes. It, okay, um, okay. As well, uh, Lindy effect. But I'm what I'm saying in 2018. It's not like. Uh, when I started writing about it and posting about it all the time, you know, it, Black Tell was still on Black Swan, Anti Fragile, and then um, I was like, well, I'm just gonna start. This is a great filter. I'm gonna, you know, start posting about it. And then over the years, uh, you know, it just grew, 
uh, it you know, grew, people started, you know, to, to, to use it. I think it's a useful lens. I think it's um, interesting. Uh, we can have fun with it too. And you can make jokes with it. You yeah. can, it's, it's just, it's well, just, you, uh, you will have made some personal contributions that I, I learned through you, like yoga in its modern form oh, right. is, uh, is not Lindy. And it's like, it's true. It's, it's a sort of an invention I think by Vivekananda or something like that, that, that to polarize the postures and things like that. But yoga itself, uh, uh, it's more like a philosophy or it used to be understood more as a philosophy before then. And then it became this right. form of exercising with some spirituality embedded in it that catch up in America. It was always in America and then was re-exported to the rest of the world. And, and the Indians themselves catch up with that um and now and now they they sell it as something in the end and they have like a yoga <laughs> national day and things like that and they are very proud but it, it had to be sold in america first right um walking on the other side on the other side is something that you tweet often about and it's like a mostly in the thing and actually we started this conversation now because you just took a lindy walk as you call them right yeah, yeah, walking. I mean, um, walking. I think it's a very. Um, I, I think with walking, it's a simple, uh, under discussed though. I think it's under discussed. I think people talk about running. They talk about jogging. They talk about weightlifting. I think rarely do you hear people just say go on very long walks um, all the time. And well, but you'll... it's it's something that also I don't know in America, but uh, in in. Spain or in 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 in, uh, in Italy is is like uh, very common. <laughs> like in right, Italians, right. they say like fare la passeggiata, and normally right. something that you would do uh, like like you have done before uh, the end of the day. And uh, in Spain also, it's very typical to go like for a walk, a paseo, and that is like uh, something that people do, like even families, etc. You know, this is. It's 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 obvious uh, it's so embedded in our cultures that it seems like a, you know like a fish talking about uh, water right but maybe for an American it isn't. Uh, I don't. I mean, I I think um, I, I think it is. I think people walk all the time too. I'm not saying it's a new thing or people don't. Um, but I think a lot of uh, I think, I think who, who, who's online, like who's my audience. Uh, a lot of people who work for a living, a lot of people who, um, you know, maybe live in, in places uh, where it's not a walkable community and they live in a car culture type environment where you separate exercise, right? You exercise, there's a gym, you go there and you go home. But um, I would say is walking, Walking, you know, may not be part of, you know, uh, may not be as central to someone's life as maybe it is to someone who lives, to an old man in Italy, right? So, uh, I don't know. I mean, um, I always like to get reminded of it sometimes because I think it provides uh, pretty good benefits. Of course. Um, okay, and this going to something that is just absolutely a scalar territory okay so see um, well, even if uh, at least you have uh, transformed these things into a meme and it's like um, i take from notes that i have taken reading your newsletter newsletter from which i subscribed or, um, america is like three different countries right you have um, one that is very nice and is where the rich people live and they don't want to leave that place. And then you have another one where people struggle to end, mate, uh, end meet. And, and another country is like a war zone. And, uh, and then you see <laughs> that you have like a, probably people living in the middle, most of them is, is, uh, are uh, what you call for our livers or for our, uh, for, for a uh, for a chill, how how you use how yeah, do we spell for it? our life for our life sometimes it, it looks better on the screen than it is to say it out loud the 4HL 
So it's very um, chill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think most working people are in a structure, and most people are in a salary. Um, and I think, you know, uh, Taleb is very good at explaining payoff space, which is business owners, investors. Um, but I, I think I think most of us though are mm-hmm. working uh, at a job, and what Absolutely. does that even mean? What does that Absolutely. like? Absolutely. And it is, it's, 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 it's also something that I mean, you found out is, is maybe like a niche or is, is maybe something obvious, but people who read Taleb seem not to realize. And it's, it's something that you, you have written about that the advice of guys in payover space and Taleb is obviously one, translate badly into what you call the consistency space in which most of four hour livers live. Right. So your job is to be consistent, right? At work, you're paid to be available there and to do a good enough job. And that's, you know, um, that's why we, we don't have contractors for every piece of work, right? We have, uh, they pay people to be there from the work needs to be completed. And if, once you stop being consistent, uh, that's when, you know, there's a big down, downside because you're not, um, Uh, you're not diversified in your uh, your income flows. You just have a job, um, and that's what you do, and that's what most people do. And from that downside, and from that consistency that you need to sort of engage in, comes basically a whole. That's your life, and it affects you know what the weekend is. It affects um, where you seek volatility in other places. Um, and, and a, uh, you know, Taleb is one, but I think Taleb is a little bit more honest with saying, hey, you know, this is, this is for people, you know, who are like me, these, this advice, other people like Naval or a lot of gurus on Twitter won't tell you that the advice they're giving is for people who don't need to be consistent every day and are more free and don't have I think um, maybe they don't realize. any structure. Maybe, maybe maybe they don't get it. Maybe, maybe they cannot put uh, themselves in the shoe of the four-hour life person, or I don't, I don't know. Or, or, or I think in the case of Naval, which is uh, pretty obvious, he really thinks, uh, he, or he seems to think that everyone can make it into consistency space by learning to code or something like that. That seems like a very IYI idea. Yet the man is is obviously not not a stupid. Okay, so to make him, uh, he's not here. He cannot argue for what he's saying. So maybe I'm just, uh, you know, reducing. Well, he, sometimes he looks a bit like a fortune cookie, no? When he tweets, so I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, like same same applies for Taleb. You know that sometimes you make a provocative statement in Twitter, and of course there is a little there are layers and. And, you know, and then maybe he's a bit more, much more sophisticated in his thought than that, right? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I think they know, uh, I think Naval, but I think 90% of their readership is employed. But what are you going to do? Like cut off, nine, you know, cut off uh, 90% of your crowd well, uh, I, by I, telling I, them I, that this advice will not apply to you or just throw it out there and just uh, step, you know, step behind the curtain and so and, but it's dangerous though right i mean if you give somebody I, that's the thing i don't think that is dangerous it's like i mean uh, is if if you learn to code because you believe uh, that uh, that will make you a billionaire or something like that and you do that sort of thing well it will be like an active endeavor and um it's unlikely to harm you right if, if you really learn to code you might not make it into pay off a space, but you might make me comfortably into consistency space. So I, I don't see learning to code as a problem. It's just something that I don't think that it scales very well. And um, well, I see either. So that- no, I wouldn't say learn the code. I would say give pay, pay off the space advice to consistency space members all the time. So yeah, learn the code is fine. I mean, that's, but that's not just what he's saying. That's not what, you know, uh, anybody, you know, in payoff space in that realm is saying, they're saying things um, such as don't listen to hierarchy or, you know, do your own thing or um, you're, you know, uh, things that would lead to someone well, who has to work for a living would, would 
probably get them in trouble. At least, yeah. yeah. Okay. Literally. If, if you taken literally, yes. But now you can say that maybe they are tweeting in a register that it is not to be taken literally, that it is not epistemic or something like deeper than that, that it is uh, just a, a, a direction, but it is not uh, literally what they mean. Or, But anyway, I, I think that you, you found this niche of, of the for our life and, and definitely Taleb is, is, is not there. Okay, so, and, and, and when I, when I see this is, I've seen it. People in, in whatever WhatsApp groups and things like that say like that are maybe broke or not uh, wealthy individuals uh, discussing if they need to uh, uh, earn X amount of uh, their like net worth, uh, like uh, having uh, gold and things like that, you know, to hedge and things like that. It's like, I mean, it's, it's, when you have nothing, you don't have to worry about hedging, so to say, you know, it's, it's right, not, right. you are not Nassim Taleb, right? Um, right. Anyway, but uh, this is something, is, it's not a critique, it's more like as I was reading you about writing about consistency space and payoff space, that I, uh, maybe probably you will agree, but that I think that the people that are in four hour life and in the consistency space look to each other much more than people that are in the payoff space, right? So, I, so actually, I think the, when you say the advice translates badly to, from a payoff space to four hour life, it's very true, but there are things that you say like, okay, people in the, for our life cluster with each other. They have uh, to cope with downside, things like that, that billionaires or business owners don't, don't have to. And then there are things like, I don't know, that uh, you say that uh, people in the pay of space are potentially honest when people in the uh, for our life, it's, it's almost impossible for them to be. And this, this kind of thing that, I don't know, I, I find it, uh, Contestable and also like um, in in the payoff space, you will have like very different animals. So it's, it's a bit like I mean, it's like if you the other day I, I tweeted something and uh, there was a lady that was saying that she was not attracted to men with cats, and you told me like, well, pay attention because what one woman says is more representative of the whole sex. When that when one man says something about men, okay. This is I will say like in a similar manner, when someone uh, in the four-hour life says something about the four-hour life, it translates better to the other guys that are in that uh, domain than when someone that it is in the payoff space says something about the people that are in the payoff space. It, there is more randomness in the payoff space. Yeah, what? but there's also, uh, you know, we see this online, which is um, there's a reason why people are anonymous, so they can speak the truth, right? Because if they put their name and face to their profile, they're afraid of what their job would, you know, they were afraid of their position or career. So if you own your own uh, venture, there is less of a pressure um to there are different the there's a thing there's you know different. it's like a, your, your website can be banned in china and things like that you know it's, it's uh, i don't know yeah oh uh, yeah sure but i would say that um every 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 employee has to uh, be careful but not every business owner has to be careful that's what i would say yeah okay i can i can agree with that statement anyway um, then another core concept, uh, refinement, refinement culture. And I will list some examples uh, from your uh, newsletter. Uh, sports uh, using increasingly data science, which means, for instance, that in the NBA, um, trainers crunching the data advise uh, players to do more three-point shots, uh, uh, logos, of brands with uh, the 
person in the log or the character in the logo looking healthier, sexier, sending more healthy image, like the Quaker gay guy that whose logo was uh, changed. Um, writing a style also was taking like uh, people writing in in a, a kind of a standardized style that GP3 generators can mimic cosmetic surgery, gentrification, uh, and uh, Airbnb as uh, the ultimate expression of this. And then vitamins also something that you say that is uh, part of this refinement culture. Maybe you can elaborate on. Yeah, that. refinement culture is the name I give to something we're seeing in society that's uh, optimized by, um, like you said, data science. Um, it also involves um, sort of a refinement on like a smoothing of, 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 of details and, and maybe uh, making everything, uh, like there's some logos that are some ridiculous changes lately. Like they got rid of the chest hair on Little Caesars Pizza logo, right? So it's clean. <laughs> they made the uh, long, what is some fishing, some fishing man. They made him like a young, handsome man. So, uh, and then, and then in sports, it's obvious, right? So the data science in sports, you know, the, the NBA, they've managed to do uh, the calculations on what shots go in. So every shot is from either the three point line or from up close. There's, there's very few mid range shots anymore. Um, and this, this sort of has gone to soccer as well. Um, I think I posted about, which is see less shots outside of the box. Um, so there's just a gradual, uh, and it's also moved to writing style, which is coalescing and clustering into sort of this New Yorker style, I guess, which is they all kind of, they all kind of read alike. And if you read a lot of articles, you, you think it's just, there's no difference. It's almost this academic corporate HR kind of style that, that's just synonymous everywhere. And now they have a, it's, it's, it's a writing horrible. simulator. It's, yeah, it's like it can be mimicked by machines and it's it's like a non-human. It's like I'm, I'm lately into Paul Feyerabend and I'm recommending this uh, to people to read because he was quite an original thinker. And he was uh, saying this about scientific papers. It's like when, when you read Galileo Galilei, he would wrote uh, dialogues and they were human and he would put like uh, uh, people talking to each other, uh, stories embedded with actual science. And that like little by little, and it was like a science was becoming more an expert kind of uh, craft. Then it, it became like unacceptable. And he writes uh, against a method, uh, you know, this is like, like a, he blames Newton for that, but I think it's probably more complicated. And, and it's like, uh, you know, that it the uh, expert is uh, is uh, like always inside of a box and then to be considered an expert you have to follow a certain rules and to write a scientific paper you have even to pretend that you have followed a certain kind of methodology uh, following deduction uh, establishing a theory validating it by facts when it says like most of the time actual science doesn't work that way it is maybe bit uh, taken off example of, uh, of uh, what you were saying, but when you say like a text becoming like kind of a template, even even I'm not talking about scientific papers, this is true for scientific papers probably for longer than it is for a magazine uh, kind of uh, stories, but it is, uh, yeah, it's it's generally true. And this is also somehow why... Um, the cars but, look the same. Cars look the same right now. Um, yeah. And if yeah, I mean, if you grew, I'm sure you're my age, you remember being a kid and seeing a lot of weird looking cars and different, different cars and cars with, I believe they did a study showing the colors of cars also have uh, clustered into black, white, gray, and uh, a little bit of blue. Um, and that's basically what 90% of the colors are now in cars. And if you go back 30, 40, 50 years ago, you saw or they did they actually did a study. They said, they said you know, red, um, green, yellow, and black and white were uh, lower. And 
Um, that's just another example uh, of a lot of things sort of being refined to a certain to a certain standard that it looks the same. And well, it's optimization. It's maybe also the same. It's right. something also. I mean, here's the thing: is a question, but you have also written about high ceilings. Oh, for instance, and, and, and one right. idea that I found is that you, you're a bit of an ideas man, okay? So it's just so, so that, they tell you that there are guys who don't don't have ideas, and it's I, I you know, it's, it's very intelligent guys. It's something like I told you, I, I tried to be in the pay of a space, so you know, I created a startup, mm -hmm. I, you know, and it's like I will have people who would get interested and so on, and they were very talented developers and things like that unable to have like one idea you know they were like surprised when you they find like when you try to do a creative endeavor of people that have ideas and then you realize that that, that these things are, are rare and are sort of precious you know this is there's, there's also something that maybe i'm taking it out from your thing is um, um about also your writing style is you write in Twitter, you don't follow this uh, refinement culture style. You even say that you know, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, artificial. Um, and that's the thing that I think you are good in Twitter. And yet that's like, uh, it must be frustrating being good at something that it is so difficult to monetize. You know, that's the impression uh, I'm getting, like <laughs> we are getting, a bit of a bit of suckers in Twitter because we are uh, we are making tweets we don't get uh, anything in exchange except for a certain recognition among our own um, tribe so to say um, and um, and even now as I say like uh, it's, it's something that I wonder if it happens to big accounts it wouldn't happen to me because I don't have that many followers but you have an increasingly interesting base, Taleb even much bigger. And it's like, you know, there's, the, there's this push for censorship on Twitter. Um, it doesn't seem that people are leaving it anyways. You 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 think that uh, Twitter is sort of Lindy, as you were saying, like it's a bar and it's, um, it maps a bit of like gossiping uh, that you would have in a small towns and that kind of thing. But but uh, see, what if it is not Lindy, you know? And then they, like, I, th I think there's Jack can mess it up. It's uh, Jack Dorsey yeah. can can make the wrong sure. choices and and uh, you know it's it's uh, and 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 then like if you have a very big platform like Taleb, it will be very difficult to rebuild that uh, somewhere else. And then it's like, uh, you are a bit taken uh, by Twitter and you have to defend it because uh, your public is, uh, is reading you there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I went to Substack. So um, even if something happens with me on Twitter, I'll um, have an outlet to write. Um, so, and, and that's something I promote a lot and I put a lot of my um, ideas and, uh, and um, so in case something does happen, there's, there's always that, but, um, but censorship is sort of part of the game in my opinion. And, uh, you know, if you get caught by the police, does that mean the police are smart or does that mean you're stupid, right? So it's one of that, um, which is, I think you can probably evade any type of censorship by being clever. Uh, so, um, but other than that, that's, that's my opinion on that. I'm not leaving. Um, that's where I think, um, I also think Twitter's fun. I think uh, posting your thoughts. Now, if you gave this to writers centuries ago, do you think they would not use this? Do you think, do you think uh, what's his name? Ro Peregrini. What's his name? You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm Italian. That is, you don't think, well, you we don't have think a Spanish version. I, I wanted to tell you about that. You know, this is, this is a Spanish guy that was called Ramon Gomez de la Serna, and he invented a literary genre, gender, it was, he called a Gregoria. And it was like a very short uh, story, so to say, 
uh, that uh, would uh, fit into a tweet perfectly. And uh, it was uh, slightly humoristic. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that he wrote entire books with this. And it's like, I'll, I'll read you one example. It was uh, something that would say like, the doors get angry with the wind. You know, that, that would be a great idea. You know, it's slightly humoristic, it's metaphorical, something like that. This guy, he would, he would be big on Twitter, you know, and I'm pretty sure that he would be using Twitter. Yet, he, he was very good and he, 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 he had a lot of a sense of humor. And he's considered, it's considered like a minor art. And that's what they say, like, you know, he invented, invented, I say in brackets, because it's a bit also, like, uh, he was the only one doing this, uh, this kind of art of this uh, uh, short sentencing and so on. And uh, he is not as, as much, he doesn't get as much praise as a guy like uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, yeah, right? That he wrote mm -hmm. entire plays or, you know, or, or guys like uh, Bayen Clan who wrote novels, he's considered like a minor kind of thing. And it's like, the thing is, that you can be very good at Twitter, but Twitter is like sort of a minor art, right? And if you are good at a minor art, that may be a, a little bit disappointing somehow. Even if you are very good at it, you know, it's, it's, uh, you don't get uh, the recognition that uh, that uh, your art deserves, so to say. But I think I'm, I'm a bit peculiar in seeing Twitter as an art because almost no one sees uh, that way, right? Um, anyway, let's uh, let's go on, on your core concepts, uh, single and relationship domain. So I'll try to add up things that you have written. Um, men in the single domain are constrained to follow kind of a template because they have to fit into a market demand. Men that are in the relationship domain are more free and that they can be quirky and uh, cultivate their own personality because they have already been vetted by a woman. Let's say, that reminds me, this is this film I like, this, the, the Departed, the, the American version. Um, is uh, the character played by Alec Baldwin, there's a policeman. He's kind of grooming uh, Matt Damon, who is a new policeman. And he's telling him like, now that you are going to get married, like women are going to <laughs> try to grab you, you know, because they will see the ring and it's like, you have been betted by a woman, you know, that means that you are good for a relationship. And it's a, uh, it's a, a bit something that you you have uh, written there. It's like, and you were you were saying you, you have written many more things, but uh, for instance, uh, you did one post uh, regarding this. Another thing you've written uh, yeah, about uh, is uh, asymmetry in breakups, which is something that is backed up by studies. No, wait, wait. Going to the um, the uh, sometimes you have a, you, you 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 have trouble talking to someone who's single and you're in a relationship. Um, there's also biological changes. Your testosterone goes down as a man when you're in a relationship. And in fact, a woman's testosterone goes up when she's in a relationship, right? So um, there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of, you know, we're in two different worlds here, uh, especially when you're, you know, let's say even like a family too. You have kids, you know. Um, well, that's a big game changer. I see. Right. Um, but, but also, but I think you see it with, you know, you also, when you're in a single, I don't think you can unfeel the dating market. Like, when you step outside, it's, um, you know, it's just a world, the invisible world is different versus someone who's in a relationship is not in that state of mind. He doesn't feel the, uh, the dating market in a visceral, right? That anything can happen, the optionality, the, um, the eroticness, it's a little bit, toned down for him. She's just not in that um, headspace. And I was just making like just some observations, right? So you could be, you're more free if you're in a relationship because, um, you know, your relationship is the world. That is pop, that is culture, right? Your culture is whatever, you know, your wife thinks looks good on you versus when you're in a single domain, you have to abide by Right, uh, what the outside world, you, just, you know, and you have to live in that outside pop culture world and what's fashionable. And you have to think about attracting a maid and signaling. 
Um, so those, you know, uh, just being single and being in a relationship aren't just two, uh, and just like a relationship status. It's also, you're living in two different worlds. One is more affected by the outside world. Uh, one is more, you know, one is creating a different world. So that's all. Well, this in that you were tweeting recently and uh, that people DM you asking for relationship advice, maybe because you have written about these things, I don't know. And and uh, you find it very odd because every relationship is like right. a, a world in its own, which is okay. Like, it's okay. It's like, I don't know, how should I uh, split finances with my uh, wife or things like that? You know, it's like, how can I know I'm not even your friend, right? Right, right. The point is that a relationship is built on precedent and agreement or built over time and events that, um, and, and just these little stalemates along the way. And, you know, that are, it's just like a novel. It's like a big book of, of things that were that where you are at that point. And then you all of a sudden talk about to your friend about a problem. And it's like, you, this, this person, this outsider is not going to know all of this history, right, that led to this issue that, you know, that, that may be influenced by this issue. And it's, um, it's, just, it's just an art. But a it's a more thing that I don't know what you will think of the ethics of that, but if people DM you asking that kind of advice, maybe there is like a monetization kind of opportunity you have like a kind of a, an interesting basis like you know it's a, uh, like one hour with Paul Scalas <laughs> whatever you you build that and I, I'm, I'm, I mean maybe, maybe that could work I can tell you that I have this uh, Lebanese friend who happens to be uh, well it's not coincidence uh, I met him also on Taleb Twitter and who, who is uh, like, he has moved online. He, he was a philosophy teacher in the American University of Beirut. Yeah. And now he's doing uh, philosophy lessons on, on Twitter, uh, sorry, on, on Zoom. And uh, he promotes them on Twitter. And as far as I know, it's just, I don't think that uh, he makes it a secret. I think because of the Lebanese pound uh, uh, inflation now he's uh, he's right. earning more income uh, as a zoom kind of uh, philosophy guru or consultant or teacher than than he was uh, doing as a, yeah well anyway but no this, that's not that's not for me i like to write my own ideas um but this is also not, something I don't, that, I don't like for me i, that I don't the, like asking i don't like I don't, I'm not desperate for money enough to yeah, okay, do okay. anything right now. Fair, that I don't fair want enough. To I, I find it ethically borderline. But I think that, and you have written about that, that therap therapy is ethically borderline. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like uh, renting a friend uh, uh, advice or something like that. And it's it's probably even the, the therapist doesn't have any skin in the game or so to say, you know, it's, 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 it's almost like prostitution of friendship. Um, um, I think therapy is, uh, based off the relationship between the person and the other person, and um, and that and that uh, con attachment is probably what makes it work if it works. But uh, and other times, that's what a friend friend would provide. And I think uh, that's basically that's basically what's going on with therapy, which is we may have a lot of people without good friends, so they're renting one. Um, hoping to make an attachment with this person, and through that attachment, uh, they may feel better. So that's that's my take on what therapy really is. Okay, well, you have also written out a symmetry of breakups, and uh, this yes. is backed by studies. So it's a uh, uh, woman go better, and uh, they initiate more often divorce proce procedures. And and you have you illustrate with an example that is is something I like because. I, I try to do also the time like uh, illustrates the point. It's Anthony Bourdain, this uh, very accomplished guy who had like uh, his own show over which he had a full uh, control, uh, creative right. control, and and he got involved with an actress, and the actress cheated on him, and the guy killed himself. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times I like to look through the lens of what is my experience, then what is then I go back and look at some old literature. Um, Lindy literature, right? Some ancient, whatever, you know, what, what can I find on this topic? And then I'll, I'll look into modern um, studies. 
And this particular one seems to hit all of the trifecta, right? Not always is there a trifecta, but this one seems to correspond to um, a real phenomenon, which is men do not um, recover from breakup like women do. And in fact, may never recover unless they get into another relationship and they take it harder. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think anybody, who, any man who's ever been in this situation understands what I'm talking about. And I think that's one of my, my more popular subjects because uh, people feel it deeply. Um, and uh, Bourdain, is, Bourdain was a tragic example of this, which is, I, you know, I enjoyed watching the show. I thought- He was very good. Yeah. I also liked him. He was very much. good, right. I like it. You know, I, I think it was, it was a good show. I don't really watch much TV um, and I found his show to be uh, pretty good. So, um, and then you have this guy on top of the world, good looking, millionaire, um, has Apparently he was not uh, so well off. That's also disputed, I think, when he was dying that he he, he had made some bad deals or something. Uh, I've had somebody reply that there was there was a lot of money in real estate. He, he was okay. He, he was, was okay. okay. It wasn't, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, I don't think he had a hundred million dollars, but I don't think he had just one million. So yeah. I think it's somewhere in between that. Um, But but he was, you know, had his own show. He was about, what, his mid-50s? So it's not like, you know, Berlusconi is still going and he's 80, right? So he's not, he's not a very old man compared to other stuff out there. And, um, you know, the seemingly innocent sort of breakup drove this guy with almost a perfect life, right? I mean, if you look at what a lot of people's lives want to be, it's, you know, write a book, he did shows, You know, creative control over TV production. It's Traveling to amazing places, meeting Traveling interesting wants, people. Meets interesting people. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. I also came up from, you know, humble origins and, you know, great career. And and so like, what is, you know, people talk, talking about his addiction, his drug addiction. That, and he died with no drugs in medicine, by the way, um, or alcohol. Um, and so... You know, there's another phenomenon here, which is um, something a little deeper, which I think is like a hidden, um, hidden thing nobody talks about because of, I don't know, machismo or whatever you want to call it, which is men feel the breakup much more intensely than uh, women do, and it leads to I, crazy behaviors. I think I think every uh, like the thing is also like, you say people like it, but everyone knows these things are a bit true and it's like also something that you have written about that it is a good observation it is um um it's something also i i don't know if it's talib but someone i said like everyone understands black swans in terms of the relationships i mean it's that you might be in fully inconsistent space but everyone has has like has had at least once in their lives uh, uh In serendipitous encounter with someone that that was like a very unexpected and marvelous and and this is this uh, guys uh, um yeah well, this is uh, yeah people in in consistency space uh, experiencing black swans uh, that way or as you say pay off a space in the dating arena right And I also think there's asymmetries in human nature. So, um, and we don't, modern culture doesn't maybe talk about it or modern literature doesn't, but here's an asymmetry that um, you should be aware of that um, divorces or long-term relationship breakups may affect you more than the other person. Um, yeah. So there you go. And well, just like yeah. the, the, the human feels the loss greater than the gain. Okay, that okay. much of a truth. It's also the fact that uh, there are asymmetries in, uh, between the sexes that, Any, this is right. also this is it's, it's pretty obvious also this is like everyone can understand but it it maybe goes against the zeitgeist or or whatever you want to call it that uh, that you know that is it obvious it's, it's in politically your opinion, correct. for me it's obvious and it's yeah. also like i mean it's okay. in in what's the name of this guy richard dawkins the selfish gene he writes about the asymmetries in male female Uh, selection of partners and things like that. It's, it's, I think that any accomplished biologist or zoologist knows this thing and he will not be shocked about it. Uh, as if you go to the other journalist, maybe it's a different story, yeah. But, uh, but uh, still, 
there is some truth to it. And when someone like yourself talks freely about it, it uh, it rings a bell to many people because uh, it's it's uh, like we have all seen this. Well, uh, then things you have wrote about uh, politics as sports this is also something that I uh, see that you you have illustrated in your newsletter. I've, I've seen it um, elsewhere. I'm I'm fan of American movies, uh, and this uh, I, uh, there's a uh, John Ford movie that is called uh, The Last Hurray, uh, and it's uh, from 1950s. And it's, there is this politician, there is an Irish guy that it's more or less the major of, of Boston. They don't say it clearly because there were some copyright issues that he makes this parallel that politics is a sports. Even in some other movie, there's primary colors. There is a, a candidate that it is the candidate that John Travolta is fighting in a primary of the Democrat Party, Democratic Party. And he makes explicitly this, uh, um, uh, even uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, politics is like pro wrestling, and and this is this is the thing is with uh, Trump is is become so obvious because he, he had like some interest in, in the pro wrestling, and he he was uh, explicitly inspired by this uh, as you have written in your newsletter Jesse Ventura mm, wrestler who became uh, 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 governor of Minnesota, right. and then he mimicked uh, his campaign. Of, uh, he, he got a lot of insights from this guy, um, and that, that politics is becoming like a show business uh, in the strictly sense of it, right? And it's fake. Yeah, yeah. I think the best, uh, more best view of politics should be the pro wrestling angle because functionally, there's an audience, us, the public. There's um, there's candidates and they're both trash talking each other. One of them's trying to make the other the good guy. One of them's trying to make the other bad guy. Uh, even though they get in fights all the time, they always sort of wink at the camera and still have dinner together, right? So there's kayfabe, which is a show they put on for the audience. There's something called announcers, right? The announcers at the pro, even at sports, by the way, but in pro wrestling, the announcers aren't impartial. They're, they're there to hype up the product, right? That's what CNN, that's what all these New York Times journalists are doing is that they are there to make this interesting, to make you read about it. They're not trying to downplay any of it, right? That's not their job. Their job is to make, sell uh, newspapers, ratings or whatever. Um, Especially with the critics, you see this. It's becoming critics. more like that. It's becoming more uh, adversarial and more obviously entertaining. I, I remember CNN, as I had a cable television in Spain, and sometimes I would tune CNN just, you know, to practice English and things like that. And it was very different from what it is today. It 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 had like this pretension of, you know, like mainstream uh, appealing to everyone and uh, like a neutral kind of tone they, they don't even try that anymore yeah and i think trump accelerated that i think that's one of these um one thing that made it very like as you said made it abundantly clear that this is name calling insult the crowd's gonna love it go to the lowest common denominator that's what pro wrestling is that's what people want um, that they want to see a fight. Well, that's the thing is, is that when like uh, Ellen DeGeneres or whatever talks to uh, to George W. Bush uh, on a Super Bowl match, people get angry because they are not adversarial and it's like the public demands right. it to a point that they cannot even have like a, like, a, like a, I don't know, like a, a polite conversation because that would break the rules so of of the game. So, so yeah, so it's funny, in pro wrestling, there was an era where people thought it was real, okay? From like the 40s to about 70s <laughs> or 80s, people thought hey, this could actually be a real fight, right? And some people are in that mode of politics, right? And then wrestling admitted that this is fake, but the fans, the fans grew, they didn't walk away, right? So that's weird, right? Why would you keep watching? even though you know it's fake well it's because now they're interested in the
characters and it's fake, but they're also deeply interested in um, how it's fake or the interactions or getting angry um, at, 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 at politicians. So it's become this weird sort of uh, genre of entertainment. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically uh, pro wrestling. And, and you, have a, you have a book on Trump's tweets in 2016 that has become very relevant right, right now, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago, I sat down. I said, "I mean, this is this is like uh, this is a historic end of being on." I don't know if you were on Twitter, but I was in 2015. I was I was lurking uh, up until two years ago, oh, and okay. then I mean, I, I I was really thinking that um, the downside was too too important. You know that you would have these stories of uh, some person, some crazy pe pe person tweeting some crazy shit on Twitter and that got fired and things like that, you know, no, or on Twitter, on Facebook, or whatever. So it's like I, I I, only saw the downside, not the upside, you know, now from a couple of years ago, and it's like you, you were one of the accounts that I was following with more intensity. I've... Uh, been more active, uh, given a bit more of myself, and I have uh, met people through Twitter. And it's, it's also maybe diverting from your main uh, core ideas. Uh, I think you you have met Taleb, for instance, right? Uh, and and was mm -hmm. it uh, through Twitter, or is 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 is, is like uh, you you got like a bit friends uh, through Twitter, or? I mean, through our the real world risk, um, it was there. It was there. We met and hung out after. Okay, okay, but uh, he didn't know you existed before for your tweets before Real World Risk Institute. Oh no, he did. Yeah, that's why he gave me a scholarship, right? Okay, you got the scholarship. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's what I mean. Office, it's yeah, exactly it. which is also like. I mean, if we go back to Taleb, because this guy that I was telling you, the philosophy professor, is also friends with Taleb. He made friends with Taleb through Twitter, which, I mean, it's and it's it's more impressive, uh, like for Taleb fan that uh, that he gets like friends with some of his fans than the other way around. But it it uh, it's also representative of of the. Well, I think Taleb is a very special man. I doubt that someone like Pinker will make make friends with uh, guys that he has met on Twitter. Uh, probably he does not even keep his own tweets uh, himself. Uh, but anyway. Um, oh no, it's great! Absolutely great. I was uh, the whole the whole experience of being on Taleb Twitter is great. The man is it's just, it's just stuff you don't expect happen and it's just it's all great i mean it's it's great i mean uh you know other people aren't doing this you know this is not uh <laughs> you like you said pinker's not nobody's doing this. It's, it's great of course it's great um but yeah i forgot what we were talking about okay um more core concepts uh, OVI for women only that's something that i picked on my blog oh when I was wait writing on nacho I have to go back to the book. Sorry. A few years ago, I was on Twitter. I saw Donald Trump. He was controlling the news cycle with his tweets. It was crazy to me. They were reporting on his tweets, and then people were responding to his tweets. And he was he was doing a campaign off of tweets and then also doing big election rallies. And I thought, I've never seen this before. I'm going to save every one of his tweets, and then I'm going to put a annotate each tweet with the context of why he's what he's talking about, because there's mm. controversies happening daily. And it became this 600-page book of his tweets and my footnotes. And from June 2015 to, or from 2015 to when he won the election. And, um, and then I, I sent it out for free for years. I sent it out for free. I said, here, download it. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and then Twitter, you know, kicks Trump off. Everybody kicks Trump off, basically, not just Twitter. Um, and then I put it, uh, I, I pulled out my book. Now I, and then I put it, uh, put $7 price tag on it. Cause now is, is, is it, is it what? Then, I mean, uh, the timing is perfect. Oh uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, here Good. and there, you know, but it's, um, 
I think it's a real piece of history. Yeah, happy. This is, this is also, it, it's a good, like, uh, you took, like, an asymmetric position, right? Well, it would uh, demand some work on your behalf to compile all those tweets. Uh, and, uh, and uh, well, now it, it might be paying off for you. Happy for you. No, but it's, it's, it's not just a money thing. It's also a scholarly thing, because if you're going to read about the Trump era. Well, this thing is, there is nothing wrong in trying people. to monetize it, or is it? Or, or yet, I mean, sure. I don't know. It's, yeah. uh... No, it's great. No, it's fine. But I'm saying it's when you people are going to write about this this era that probably going to just ended. Uh, there's a lot of high emotions. A lot of people hate him. A lot of people love him uh, in a way that's also um, irrational, in my opinion. But if you want what he actually said, and in the context of what he said. You can have it. It's a real history book. Anyways, we can move forward. I think I, I know what you think about that, but anyway, I will ask right. you that anyways. About the election fraud claims and all that. Or you don't have an opinion or you have an opinion uh, about it or you don't, I don't find don't it really an interesting have, um, A strong opinion. I don't have a strong opinion. Well, I mean, that's I mean, the thing. You know, I can, that see, I, uh, I can see how they could do it, but I haven't seen evidence. So I can. I could like they try to impeach him from right, fake Russian stuff, so I can see like, oh yeah, they may do something. Unfortunately, he didn't. I didn't provide anything to the public that's so obvious what they did. So we're in this weird spot of. Um, I mean, I haven't seen anything. Apparently, the evidence outraged. that he has provided or his team has been like I don't know. He has filed fifty lawsuits or whatever, and has been universally dismissed is not that good yet right. the fact that very smart people and this is like something that i've learned uh out of of these claims though in in, in there are films american films that explain the process of fixing an election there is an, a, a film from the 40s that is called the great mcginty is a guy who gets governor by fixing an election so it's, it's like something that americans find some plausibility on it you know because well, and, and that's the thing is it, it connects a bit with uh, things that I think Taleb has written on Twitter recently, though he has been basically shut up, shutting up about it uh, for a long time. That, well, the, the thing is also tr this Trump technique, it would work anywhere. And say so like, I just right. make a leap of faith when there is an Spanish election that the guy who claims that he win the election, he won the election. And, and I have not seen in any election that I have seen that the losing candidate contests the result of the election. Though I know, I know perfectly well because there are people that are fanatically and, and that they are prone to fall for that kind of shit, that if uh, one of the losing candidates would have contested the le legitimacy of, of the winning candidate in any of the elections if, if, that I have observed, that would have worked in a, in a significant portion of, of uh, the base. And, and that uh, probably Trump knew that. Just, I, I don't know if he really believes the fraud claims. Maybe he does. Um, uh, the Taleb posted a tweet that, uh, you know, that he, he they had studied uh, with his legal team uh, about uh, Georgia fraud or something and that they had edited a video of uh, like some stupid uh, right. whatever guys uh, putting some ballots besides of a box or something like that and then recover uh, them hours later and they had more or less uh, showed that as an evidence of fraud when it wasn't one uh, so uh, you can I it's 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 difficult to presume that they are like not cynical about it, but maybe they truly believe that they they were stolen the election. I don't know. Anyway, it's, uh, it's also I don't know. I don't know it in the same way that I didn't know. I I cannot claim because I was not counting the ballots if the last Spanish election was won by the prime minister that we have today, that is Pedro Sanchez. I, I could not. Uh, I, I have to make this leap of faith, as I say. And what Trump, in a way, is doing is breaking this uh, uh, faith in the right. system, which is Without providing a smoking gun evidence, right? Some, you know, that's the problem. He's not. He doesn't have that one thing that you can latch on. But to. the American it's electoral just... system itself. It's uh, like so. You can take down the system. Uh, right? So uh, hackable. 
and you have the counting machines and the counting done by volunteers and uh, people getting ballots without showing a valid ID and things like that, that is websites that I, I, I don't presume they are neutral, like uh, Project Veritas, but they have uh, get footage uh, like showing that that is possible. Now that you have to prove that that happened and it happened at the scale and it happened in uh, five states or whatever the number of states they claim that were stolen, right? Anyway, I, I don't give much plausibility to the fact that this happened on large numbers, but some guys that are more intelligent than I and that are Americans, they do. Which, uh, which I find like, uh, you know, like, uh, well, maybe they do uh, know things that I don't know. There's also a other storyline of Taleb trying to control the conspiracy theories that are coming out of his, his followers. And, and, you know, we'll and that's the too. thing, this is which very is prevalent among the and followers. Over, and that's kind of a new trend, by the way, we've only seen in the last year or two, which has taken off, in my opinion. So, and I think, um, I wonder what that's about. Okay. UBI for women. Okay. So this is something that I picked on in my blog when I was doing a personal blog. Uh, and it's like more or less say that unsuccessful men that scales pretty well, but women uh, having trouble that doesn't scale very well. And that, well, it's, it's now there is uh, this uh, universal basic in income that is being discussed in many countries and the, the US is, is like a reality. You, you said that it should be for women only, which is again, like if you admit that there are symmetries between the sexes, it makes sense if you consider that sexes are the same or that a woman can identify as a man or a man as a woman, then it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, I think it's, it's a way, it's a proposal, a provocative proposal that allows um, a discussion on, you know, why is there higher I, I buy alcohol? It. I buy it seriously. Yeah, a lot of people, a <laughs> lot of people The do. thing is, I, I've, I've talked about your idea with my friends and like close relatives and things like that. And they, they, it makes sense to them, you know, it's just that right. no, no, no one is, is proposing this. There is no party that is proposing something like that. But it's, I, I, don't, I, I have not experienced anyone that is, well, some. Actually, when I tweeted or right. when I did that uh, blog post defending your idea, I got uh, like a bit of hate uh, tweets or comments or whatever from uh, right-wingers that are very like, they assume, they presume that this is a very feminist idea and anti-men's idea or something like that, you know? And they right. were angry about that. That's that's the only kind of opposition that uh, that I got, which I I don't think it is. You know, I don't think it's it's anti-men uh, uh, to give uh, you no. guy to women. No, uh, so I guess, uh, when I talk about the four hour life and working for a living consistency space, that's actually, uh, you know, something that's um, kind of a big deal in people's lives. Okay. And so when you have two people in there in that situation, um, that's, you know, and you scale it up to everyone in society, that changes society a little bit. Right. So we're seeing lower birth rates, we're seeing higher alcohol abuse by women, higher antidepressant use, SSRI use. I, I categorize a lot of things in that uh, article about how work, um, you know, it's not a neutral thing. It's a big deal. And also being competitive too. We're trying to race up the corporate ranks, which is a lot of what people are doing. You're seeing uh, has an effect on uh, society as a whole. And maybe we don't need to all be um, in this race. And, but, but obviously we need to maintain independence. If I'm a woman, I would want to be independent. And I think uh, it makes sense for people uh, for some sort of UBI. Uh, yeah. I think uh, and you also wrote about relationship envy. You wrote about envy in general and relationship envy. That it is, it can go both ways, but like envying the success of your partner, right? Yeah, you see that. I see that. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, it's it's becoming and, like and as, as the as the men as the women make it into the professional domain that that becomes increasingly 
a thing, especially. I've, I've seen it in friends who, whose uh, wives are more successful than they are. And it is, even if they are sort of the woke type, they find it uh, hard to cope. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they put themselves in, in the reference group and they compete with them. And um, I think who talks about this? Plutarch talks about how brothers entering the same profession uh, beyond the, you know, sometimes that could cause trouble, envy trouble as well. But um, I don't think they sort of could foresee that, you know, we're at this level where everyone's competing and everyone's, um, you know, even intermarriage you know, envy, which, you know, new phenomenon that, you know, uh, I think it's good and um, try not to put your spouse into the reference group for who you envy. I mean, you can't, it's almost, it's almost um, inevitable you're going to envy someone, but you can, you can somehow, sometimes you can choose who and who not to. Okay, well, let's say, and UBI, generally speaking, you will see like because there is this very um, obvious parallel with uh, the cura nonae that the uh, romans were distributing grain in rome right so it's, it's, it's ubi not just for women ubi in itself uh, like uh, lindy uh, in your view yeah i think it's a, i think it's i think it's like a grain allotment yeah and i don't think it's that much different than um the welfare state in a lot of places it's just a little bit more uh distributed among people so uh yeah i don't think that's something that would destabilize society and lead it to a fucking civil war or anything. well in the in the united states it, it is already happening right it's it i mean i, I don't know how I don't it works UBI but the... yet. or the checks uh the checks, yeah, yeah. Check, one, one check was sent out i mean there's there's pretty good unemployment benefits but i wouldn't call that UBI necessarily. I think UBI would be something like every month you would get a check. Um, everyone does. So. Mm. Okay, well, let's let's end up. Uh, no, that's Alessandro, the a guy I follow on Twitter, was telling me to ask you this about uh, culture and um, the fact that we are stuck in culture, and that there's something also that you have uh, written about. Uh, what, what do you mean that we are stuck in terms of uh, culture? Um, yeah, so this is actually one of more popular articles or ideas um, that we don't, first of all, we don't see a lot of changes in the last 15, 20 years. It's like maybe we saw from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, or were drastically different music, drastically different hairstyles, clothes, aesthetics, ways of speaking, um, just almost like every decade. It's almost like somebody was directing a movie in the 20th century. You look back and you said, okay, now they're gonna dress like this and do this and listen to this and watch this. And, um, and I think- Monoculture. The, the monoculture, right? The media monoculture, which is a top down. If you wanted to listen to music, you would buy it. And where did you have to buy it? The store. And how did the store get it? The store got it from the record label. There's only a few of them, right? And there's a few bands and there's you know, a couple hundred celebrities or a couple thousand that, you know, and then we all share this culture, right? We all shared. And some people yesterday on Twitter were saying, I wish I was back there because now it's, so, it's a radically different world, right? Um, because even though, you know, it was acceptable enough, right? And we all shared something, we could all converse. Right, we watch the I, same show. I, I used to uh, like spend hours on record stores, which is like, of course, something that they, they are not even well, there may be for LPs and things like that for like people into vintage and that kind of thing, but uh, uh, that, that's gone, and right? And now there's millions of artists on SoundCloud, right? Now you're just the avalanche of choice, and people sort of um get by with this new world um, by maybe a Spotify playlist that gets created for you. But what, who, what creates that? An algorithm. This algorithm takes your, your already, your, your chosen songs, tries to predict what you're going to want to listen to, but it's sort of based on prediction of what you like already. So it's not really creating exactly. art for exactly. you. It's it is, reinforcing. It's missing so their uh, serendipity, you know? 
so so scale you know transfer that to movies right we, you know sequels all the time sequels sequels, sequels. it's 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 um, horrible so still... i tell you it's like i i'm i'm yeah. into movies and and it's like uh, i i think there's also an effect that me myself i've i've already seen like the most relevantly rebel, culturally relevant movies right i've i've seen already like all the stanley kubrick movies probably several times right. over and it, it's like i find it less enjoyable but when I see what is produced today, it's I don't find it any interest. But right. I, it's yeah. also I thing mean, is that uh, the, well about the monoculture, side. it's it's a bit strange because you know I think like uh, you you point out that before like we were it's it's like if someone or there was a market and someone was dictating what would be the market trends and things like that, which I I buy. But now it seems like even if the culture is more decentralized, there is more of a monoculture in what you call the 1000 American empire or 1KAE. And, and it's, it's like uh, everyone looking to like what Americans do. And maybe this gets like somehow, I don't know, enhanced by social media or something. So uh, yeah, I think I think there's two cultures now, right? There's there's an internet culture and decentralized groups, and this is this is obviously progressing. There's you know obviously we're here talking about something, right? So and there's there's you know uh, there's lots of lots of stuff going on down here. Um, then you have the you know the apparatus from the 20th century that's still going on though, and it's still huge. And in fact, it's global now. And um, it's exported to foreigners more than ever before. And then, you know, foreigners, if they want to get out of it, you know, out of the, you know, this American media monoculture, they, they go back to the internet. But the internet is also spiritually American too. So they're also getting, you know, American type uh, subcultures, right? Um, and that's how a lot of trends like the pronouns, um, George Floyd protests, videos going viral people celebrate halloween over here and halloween well, is another example that, that it's an example it's just an example it wouldn't happen when i was a kid then you know I, I was a student in france and they were celebrating halloween i was like how old and how stupid are these french you know that they uh -huh. adopt an american uh, thing and 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 then and then like two or three years later it started picking up in spain you know and it is like and people <laughs> Now demonstrating for George Floyd, uh, like uh, shooting or well, like, we're not shoot, but uh, in 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 Spain as well, yeah. It's, uh... And um, so, and I think before in the 20th century, if you were from outside of America, you could literally just drop out and not, you know, and not be influenced at all. And I think as more generations grow up online, you're getting certain trends, you're getting um, things coming out of here, which are um, sort of maybe maybe make sense in America only context. Uh, but going back to stuck culture, uh, but it's something happened in the mid 2000s that um, stopped everything. You know, you had YouTube emerge, Twitter emerge, Facebook emerge, um, Amazon warehouse services emerge. You have a lot of uh, things emerging from that mid 2000s that shape and control this world we're in right now, and we're still uh, we're still in that world. And we're still in like people didn't get used to get tattoos when I was you know 18, yeah, 19. Same in Spain. No? Tattoos are a recent thing, right? Again, and um, they're still here, and it's we're not cycling out of this era. And if you took if you took a time travel to 2008 2007 i don't know people would recognize that you're from another time but if you went back to 19 only only in the in the apps uh, you know only in the technology only, only, on, right? well with with phone internally uh, applied to the internet but no 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 it's not even like i don't know it's, it's there has been like airbnb and things like that that have happened uh, since then but uh, yeah, right. no, no, not major cultural changes. Yeah, yeah, you are absolutely right. I think, I think. So, but if you went back to the seventies, I think uh, from the year two thousand, I think you'd see uh, a different society. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I just see that 
we're, we're not moving into those decade like transitions that we were. We may be entering, maybe, maybe it's gonna take a hundred years to change. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, so I just noticed that uh, we're more or less in a holding pattern uh, uh, in the mainstream. Obviously in, down here, you can go into a group and things are happening and are interesting. But. I'll, I'll, uh, you, you, you wanted to do one hour. I asked you for two. We are like one hour and a half now. So maybe time to start wrapping up. I'll, I'll catch up with one of one friend of mine is called Emmanuel, uh, who told yeah. me like how was uh, life in Normandy and uh, how is like uh, uh, moving to Europe. Uh, how you how are you living this? He yeah, I like it. I, I, I mean, um, I like it. It's a nice little town. It's a nice, beautiful French town. I mean, things are you know gorgeous. Uh, buildings are very nice. Uh, the food is very good. Uh, you would see it as a permanent kind of thing, or I mean, uh, not right now, not right now. But it's it's not a it's 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 a good place to be to ride out a um, crazy place, a virus that with curfews and lockdowns and um, you now it's funny when you take away the terrace and you take away the cafes in Europe. Seems, it, it does look more like America, but the nicer. <laughs> but you know, it really, you, when you take away the cafe culture, you take away something kind of big in a way. I feel like. Yeah. Well, there's a single thing. This now you mentioned that you see Twitter as as a bar, but uh, then is it is it really a bar or is it uh, something else? Uh, I don't know. Is is um, I, I, I have my doubts, you know, it's like a Jack is a, just a bad owner or is he more like a, uh, the owner of a the gas company and he just uh, needs to make uh, access uh, for everyone uh, at uh, like a constant type of service or something like this. Anyway. I, I mean, I wrote about how ISIS was on Twitter in 2013. And um, you know, you had real terrorists posting videos and you know, shouting things like "kill True. the unbelievers." Um, and that was back when Twitter was a little more wild west. And Jack uh, probably didn't care or didn't. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it well, was. Well, that's like the back thing. Then, uh, I, I see an asymmetry. Now people are. Go ahead. Yeah, I see an asymmetry in that you know. As you said, you just said it. Jack didn't care. He didn't care. It's it's like I've seen. Uh, you know, I was uh, a spectator when there was uh, the um, Catalan independence pro project, and uh, you know, there was like a referendum, and well, there was like kind of a troubles. There was like a lot of events that mapped what happened in the capital uh, the, the, the couple of weeks ago. Twitter didn't care that uh, people were posting fake news uh, about like uh, right. Catalonia getting independent uh, on Twitter at all. They didn't care. They just didn't care. Right. And, I, and I understand that they didn't care. Like Julian Assange was posting like uh, every 10 minutes, and I'm not making this up, about Catalonia becoming independent. You know, it was crazy stuff. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's 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 like there is an asymmetry in that you can you can tweet whatever fake news you want about Brazil or about Spain or whatever, but right. if uh, if someone like Donald Trump with a real platform does that in in Washington, then and then he will got censored. And right. um, well, that that's uh, I don't know if that's a paradox or or what is it? It's like uh, you know that's a. There are, there are people that are trying to enforce that. Huh? I, I saw an article in The Atlantic that said that uh, why is stopping at, at Donald Trump? Why not Bolsonaro next or uh, right. Viktor Orban or whatever, you know? Well, because Bolsonaro is not in America, right? And exactly. Is. That's the only thing. Is so Jack doesn't care about him. It's American like just, it's, of course, but if you were to be consistent, you would have to do the same thing about any other strong man or whatever, you know, that right. is uh, tweeting uh, things that are like a borderline or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, well then let's uh, 
um, Brexit <laughs> like is also something that any 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 particular insect. I, I don't think Normandy is very close to that. It's not like if it was Calais where you have like a tracks stock and things like that. But uh, have you have you got any particular insect on Brexit by uh, this move uh, to Europe? No, no. I, I just find that UK is going into more into the American sphere of influence and away from. Um, they were already United more European than, front, right? They were more than already there, you know, in a natural way before Brexit, but Brexit probably but, enhancing that, yeah. But I will say that they're uh, very aggressive in vaccinating more than any other country in Europe. And I think the reason is they have to show that um, if they're going to leave Europe, they're going to show that there's a reason we left and we're going to vaccinate way more people and get this over with there's some upside in any Kajira. so i think it. that is happening right now i don't know how long that's going to be sustained but um that's clear to me i mean they approved the vaccine before any other country did and they're even criticized by america for it and um, they're just Vaccine. Well, I think uh, it's it's Israel. I mean, it's it's much a smaller country, right. and it's easier. It's it's almost like a statistical truth that you, outliers are uh, uh, much more likely to happen in a smaller uh, samples than in bigger samples. But uh, but uh, Israel is uh, they are the ones that have like uh, the, taken the lead uh, on vaccination, right? Um, yeah, I mean, okay. you're not going to survive World War II and start Israel just for you know, a virus. Well, this is the thing that right? now, now they, are, they, are good, uh, they are good at, at vaccinating and apparently they have deployed the army. And apparently having a strong army, it's, it's useful. Yeah. You know, I, I think that also we have to rethink army as like kind of uh, management of tail risk in general, also at home. Interesting. And yeah. that, that probably uh, probably uh, the Israelis are a bit uh, ahead on, on that curve. Um, OK, well, let just uh, just before we close this, um, can you recommend us some books? I know that you are kind of well-read person. And uh, and uh, if, if you can go outside of Taleb's, you know, that, uh, that I presume that if someone will see that, they will have already written, uh, read, sorry. Um, I would be appreciating that. Um, yeah, Against the Grain is a great, is a great book about prehistory, um, about how the first cities, uh, were, you know, were really uh, not enjoyable to live in. And a lot of early war was taking slaves to work into the cities and there's a lot of disease and pestilence. Um, there's also, I also like Leon Creer, who wrote a book on uh, architecture, which is just sketches and showing you what uh, car culture does. Um, so uh, Leon Creer, uh, K-R-I-E-R. -E yeah, I've, I've been recommended it. I have not read it uh, yet. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a good book, maybe on architecture, I don't know. Okay. There's, there's two off the top of my head. Okay, well, this is uh, interesting uh, recommendations. Well, uh, uh, almost two hours. So yeah. thank you so much. I enjoyed the, you, this sure. conversation. And uh, yeah, so, um, see you next time. See you next time. Take it easy.